I'm of the belief that it is really important to have this conversation with yourself first. It's the rehearsal, right. if you would, before having the conversation with the actual human being you might be thinking of. Um, internal emotional bids, I like to think of them as. like I'm having my own bid for my own attention, for my own conversation. Hello, right. how about that? So um, the model for tough conversations that I like to use, that I've coached and taught for a number of years, I call it the Delta model. It Delta just is like, it's a nice triangle shape, so I, I like the name. Um, so there's three points to the Delta model for conversations. And it's super simple, super easy to remember, really it can be used in almost, I can't think of a circumstance where you can't use it. And you can use it for yourself. So where am I now? That's the first question. And the three, where am I now? You know what, listening today, maybe you have some statements now that are along the lines of, uh, crap, I realize something about one of my relationships. Deep breath, this is making me a little, you know, whatever it is, freaked out or concerned or whoa, hang, hang on a minute. And, and whatever other stream of consciousness you can come up with in the answer to, where am I now? That's the beginning of the tough conversation because, you know, just like with the GPS, you can't get anywhere unless you know where you are. Right. So where am I now is the first question. The second question is, where do you want to go? The GPS model actually fits it. Where do you want to go? All right. In this moment, if you're realizing you're having a tough relationship, where would you like to be? Oh, maybe I'd like to have a conversation with this person that went well. Maybe I'd like to be out of this relationship. Um, maybe I don't know, but I'd like to have clarity about where I'd like to go. Maybe I'm confused about it. Those are all desires for a place you're not. So where are, where would you like to go? Second question in this model for having tough conversations. And then the third and final um, question is, okay, I know where I am. I know where I want to go. How do I get there? Right. How do I get there? And then that's a big conversation there's lots of ways like again through coaching or mentoring or speaking with a, a colleague or um, a new friend whatever it is uh, there's a lot of work entailed in the answer to number three but hopefully if you have this three-point conversation with yourself um, you'll start to gain an awareness of how to have that conversation with the person you have in mind right and I feel that it takes a, a self-reflection first, right? You can't figure out where you want to go if you have no idea of what the starting point is. And looking internally, for me, was a big first step. Getting that information, realizing, whoa, okay, I, I thought internally that I was behaving a certain way. Now I realize I wasn't. Okay, what are these other moments that have been critical that I may have been mistreating others? I may have been abusing the people that I cared about. And this delves now into that boundary conversation, right? And for me, one of the most impactful conversations I had where a boundary was being drawn was with someone I was dating who said, I don't feel loved when you treat me this way. And it was jarring to hear that, obviously, because you love and care about this person, but it is about being firm in what you need as a human to feel loved, supported, and needed versus the behavior that's being exhibited from the other person that isn't checking those boxes for you. Yeah, I think what you're pointing to is, is, is really helpful. When we're in a conversation, the thing to remember is there's more than one of you. So if you use the Delta model to get clear, like you did, right, AJ, where you are, in an ideal scenario, the other person, person B, let's call them, is doing the same, okay? That's not always the case, that's why we get into trouble. Right. Um, if that's the case, maybe you could have them listen to this podcast. <laughs> um, but then if both person A and person B have done that sorting out, then the conversation is going to go much better. Then we can have those same three questions apply to the two of you. Where are we now? Where do we want to go? And how are we going to get there? A lot of the mess that happens in conversation happens because those things aren't covered. One person hasn't gotten themselves clear or both. And then together, they haven't asked those same questions. Right. 
And a lot of times in that situation, one party will be the one who gets those boxes checked and the other party just kind of takes agreement with it, but they aren't as prepared for that conversation. Yes. And, you know, where boundaries comes in is yeses said without boundaries, in my opinion, is just appeasement. That's just appeasement, right? Sure. And um, no's said without compassion is just like outright warfare sometimes right. in conversation. So we actually need to talk about the relationship between yeses and no's when it comes to boundaries. 